Hey guys, it's Suggy. Uh, today I want to talk to you about blend modes. Um, I quickly talked about it in my last video, but it was a little bit too difficult to try and explain the whole thing in one time-lapse video. So this is pretty much just an introduction to blend modes and for people who don't really understand it. So what I have here right now is a earlier is an earlier version of my Frankie Stein fan art. Um, I do this usually when I'm still trying to figure out the lighting before I start polishing. But pretty much these three layers right here are the three layers that I changed the blend mode because by default any layers that you have is going to be set to normal which pretty much means it's like it's as if it's like an acrylic canvas you know you just put on paint and that's the way it looks like that's the color you get uh, for blend modes blend modes will changing blend modes will make your uh, your layer react differently to other layers. So for example, I will go into details to why I chose these, but first let me just show you what I did. So first here we have a blend mode. Um, we have a layer that's set to lighten, which is the blue light coming from her left. And this next one is set to color dodge, which is the light coming from the right. And then finally we have one for on multiply which is for the shadows so pretty much this is her without any blend modes and no lighting and no shadows and stuff like that so now let me explain as to why I wanted blend modes at all or why I wanted to use it so pretty much the reason why I want blend modes or why I want to set a layer to have a different blend mode than normal is because I want whatever color I'm putting on this layer to react differently to the colors underneath the layer. So let me um, explain that a little better in this example. So this layer right here, uh, the one that I'm turning off and on, is the color of the light that's shining from her right. And I this is pretty much the color of the light. However, uh, if if I just grab this light, or grab this color, I mean, and just start painting on her with this color, I am not going to get something that's really representative of how light works. Right? So here's just a really quick demo of her lighting. Just going to clean up these edges. Okay. So this. It's not really how light works. So let me show you what it does when I turn it to color dodge. So as you can see, the color really, so for example, in this, for example, here, as well as just the way it reacts to the white of her hair and the, and the, and the blue of her hair, the dark blue of her hair, it's obviously different, right? Like this is purple and this is more pink and this is still darker than this. And the reason why I want to do that is because that's, pretty much how light works. So I'm going to explain that really quickly. So let me sh explain first what this is. So here is pretty much a value, a value gradient, right? Or a value level. So here's the darkest dark and here's the whitest white. And um, here, for example, like hypothetically, this is a ball and it it's around here when it term in terms of how dark or light it is. It's about, you know, above middle gray. While here there's a box that's clearly much darker than this red ball. It's around here. And then he, over here we have a, a lamp that is shining bright white light to both of these things. They're the same, the same light. And so, so for example, with this red ball, when this white lamp is shining light on it, it's going to make this red ball you know, whiter, right? So it's gonna probably be around here, for example. It's gonna get up to here uh, in terms of whiteness or brightness. However, if I don't use layer modes, or sorry, if I don't use blend modes on my layer, I'm pretty much saying that when this white lamp hits this, hits this box, I am going to be making this as bright as this red ball. So they're about they're at the same 
whiteness. So let me go back here and show you again. So see, like, even if I make this whiter so that it's more believable, it's, it's illuminating everything the same way, which is, like I said, not the way light works. So the way it actually works is it would illuminate this dark box about the same amount that it illuminates this red, this red ball. So this won't ever be as bright as this uh, in normal circumstances. So let's go back to this. So if I put this on color dodge, that's how I want it to work because this, this, um, this blue stripe, this dark blue stripe on her hair is still darker than this white stripe on her hair. So that's pretty much the reason for that one. Um, so let me really quickly explain kind of the difference, you know, all these, what all these, because this is still mumbo jumbo, I bet, but let me quickly talk about it in this example. So Photoshop has nicely broken up um, the different sections and the different things that the, the blend modes do. So, so let me quickly just talk about what the different ones mean. So this one, this is just normal. This is just, there's normal and dissolve. Dissolve is kind of weird, but these, these darken whatever is on the layers below or like whatever is your I image at the moment, it will darken it. While these, these lighten it. Which is why I was using color dodge right here for that one for that one layer because I want it to be to lighten things beneath it. And then these ones do a bit of both. These ones can get kind of confusing because yeah, point is it does a little bit of both. Sometimes it will if it's for example, if it's darker below that layer, it will darken it and if it's lighter, it'll lighten it even more. So this one can get kind of confusing. And then the rest of these I don't use often. These ones are a little bit weirder, like these are inversion ones. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the ones that I use. So let me quickly just highlight the ones that I like to use. So dark, uh, multiply is a big one that I like to use for shadows. Lighten, screen, and color dodge are just good different instances for um, for lighting stuff. And then finally there's, I use so overlay and soft light, soft light a lot. Just for, this, these ones are more just for interest because like I said, these can be kind of confusing to understand exactly. It's hard to predict what they're gonna do. However, I'm not saying that you guys need to memorize this at all. Um, this is just what I happen to end up using because what I actually tend to do a lot is that I don't really have an idea of what like I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do so with the layer, but I know that I want it to have some kind of blend mode on it. Like I know that I want it to react differently at the bottom, the bottom layers. So what I tend to do a lot actually is put this at normal, and then um, on Mac, the keyboard shortcut is Shift Plus or minus to cycle between these different layers. While on Windows, I know that you can just click on one and then press the up and down um, arrow keys to cycle between them. So here, this is, it's right now, it's not normal. I'm gonna press shift plus. Nope, sorry, I can't, you can't be, it's changing this one right now. So I'm gonna move this to the move tool just so that there's no drop down here. And then now I'm gonna press shift plus. And now it's just gonna go through all the different blend modes pretty much. And I'm just gonna keep going until I find one that I like. Um, and you can get some really interesting results. Like you don't need to use these for lightening or darkening. Like maybe you just wanted to add some interest and you wanted to try something new. So that's, that's kind of cool. But yeah, so pretty much I just keep going until I find something that I like. And if I end up that not liking anything, then I just don't use it. I just do this because I want to I want to try it out and see what happens pretty much and then now it's going back over so that's pretty much it and then so when I did this I was um, 
I ended up going to color dodge because I just ended up liking that one the most. And then let's say you're still not happy with this, you want to tweak it a bit, you can also always just do command U or control U, which is the hue saturation tool, and you can still change the colors um, while it's in a blend mode, and then you can see what it does to the colors once you change the color of the layer itself. So yeah, point is, what I use it for most of the time is to use it for lighting and for darkening, like for shadows, and I use it so that I can affect the layers differently at the bottom. And like, and of course, this works the same way with shadows, you know, like, shadows here are gonna affect shadows here different because just because of the colors underneath and so multiply is really nice for that because it it takes into account how light this is and things like that but yeah so please let me know if this made sense or if you have any more questions um like i said you don't have to memorize the blend modes you don't have to do anything you can just cycle through these and find one that you like but the point is just that like I, what I like about it is that it's affecting colors differently depending on what colors would below it. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye!